Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In today's video, we're going to continue on with my World War II project that I'm working on, the Lafayre Bridge campaign. Uh, but in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, finish or uh, complete, I should say, maybe not finish, but we're going to complete the uh, village of Kikigny. Uh These are the placements of where the buildings will go during the battle. Um, there's also a, a church piece that is going to lay right there, but uh, there's going to be a bocage back here and other hedges and whatnot around the battlefield but today what we're working with is the town itself the the town sector the plan is I'm going to uh, draw some trails on the on the foam and uh, like walkways that go from the doors to the street. I already have penciled in some, but what I want to do is put it in in pen. Uh, once I get that, and uh, which will help me identify exactly where the buildings go, uh, then I'm going to take some painter's tape and I am going to lay it out on my cutting board here. We're going to cut it out to each building's specifications and then we will stick it onto the foam. After we get the tape down uh, and basically the tape is only to um, what's the word um, it, it's going to allow the buildings once I peel the tape off it'll allow the buildings to sit down exactly in their cubbies, right? They'll be right down inside their little predetermined areas. Uh, so, to make that happen, I'm going to I'm going to go around the buildings with dark earth. This is going to be the area that I'm going to put grass on. I'm going to grass the dark earth and then uh, once the dark earth is placed, then I'm going to come in while it's still maybe a little wet, I'm going to put some light earth along the walkways and the parking lot and the passageways and all that uh, so that it'll blend slightly with the two. And then when it dries, uh, or while it's still wet, let me rephrase that, while it's still wet, I will peel the tape off, uh, making perfect squares for the buildings. And then, uh, and then once that is complete, then we're going to go in and add a little bit of flock coverage, maybe some flowery flock, maybe whatever, on top of the dark earth, leaving the brown, the walkways. All right, that sounds like a lot of work. Now, let's get it done. Okay. So all I really need to know is the walkway goes this way. It goes around the building, right? There's a door on the other side, right? And this area on this side of the building is a fairly wide uh, area. I, th I think it was traditionally a parking lot type scenario. And then we go walkway. Uh, yeah, that whole building front is going to be parking lot. This will go around, and then right about there, there will be a 
a walkway that goes to the street. Uh, and this road goes into that parking lot. And the door is over here. Uh, but looking from the map, it looks like it might go at an angle more this way. Okay, there is a little uh, doorway on this side. Yeah, okay. Maybe we'll put some dark earth over on that side as well. Okay. Now on this side, there is a doorway right there. I've already got it marked, it looks like. Where the walkway just goes straight to the road. Okay, and this looks like it would be one of those cut-throughs, a road that might cut through, whoops, on that side. Okay. Yeah, I think that's going to... I think that's going to settle in pretty nicely. Okay. All right, now before I make the squares, I want to put some paper down. Okay. So let's take this building, which really all I need is the base, and This is obviously going to be more than one building, right? Because it's going to be one there, one there, and one there. But as you can see, this tape is not wide enough for these buildings. So I'm going to use two pieces, overlap them, okay, and then back to my marker, I'm going to draw on the tape the building right okay so I've got the building now when I go to cut the tape I'm going to cut it just a hair larger than it should be that way uh, there will be a little bit of wiggle room inside that building. Okay, going to do the same here. Draw lines. For that building. 
and then we're going to draw lines for this building. Give it a little extra wiggle room. Remember, we're going to cut it just slightly larger than it's supposed to be. Okay, and that should be all of them. Okay, boom, boom, and boom. Boom, bitty, doom, bitty, doom, bitty, doom. Okay, now I'm not going to peel this and cut it. I'm cutting it directly on the wax paper. Cutting the wax paper itself. Now, how much wiggle room do I want to give this thing? Looks like about one millimeter. That's all it needs. Let's go all the way. Since I'm here already. There we go. Again, we're going to cut with a little bit of wiggle room, maybe a millimeter or so. Nothing too drastic, nothing too huge. Okay, and then I can go this way. Maybe for another building. Uh, okay, so this has got really close to the line, where this is still fairly far from the line. So, now, not all these buildings are the same width, so I gotta be careful. cut out each building uniquely. Okay, that was good. Trash. Okay, I don't remember which building is which, but we'll figure it out. These two where okay, these two buildings should have the exact same footprint. Uh, it's the middle building that's shaped a little bit differently because the two on the outside are dark ops buildings and the one in the middle is a Sarissa building. Which this one in the middle, I think I want to do a little work on itself, just touch up that building itself. Okay, so now I've got three building floor plans, and I do believe this is the Dark Ops one, or the uh, Sarissa one. We're just going to double check it. Yep, that looks really good. Okay, and the Sarissa one I'm putting up there. So now what we do is we take the blue tape and the wax paper and I peel the wax paper off. Okay, so I'm curling this end trying to get the wax paper and the blue tape to separate. I've taken 30 minutes in the past to do one of these type of decals. Uh, yeah, when I was painting my rifles with a camo pattern, uh, I made a bunch of... decals like this. I might need to switch my glasses. There we go. Okay, I got just a very little bitty corner. That's all I need to grab a hold of. There we go. And now we just peel the backing off. Uh, like that. We got a sticker.
Yep, that's gonna work. Okay, so that's, that means when I lay the building down, it's gonna have a perfectly smooth area to lay on. And you'll also might wanna notice that I painted the blue foam under where I was gonna put the buildings so that there would be a layer of a layer of paint underneath there. Okay, so let me get these other stickers done and then I'll be right back. Okay, that was uh, cutting these out and getting the foundation set. I could go ahead and remove the buildings now that we already know where the ro the roads, the walkways meet up with the uh, doors and and whatnot. So now I could just get in with my dark earth and we can start texturing this. Uh, I take dark earth and I watered it down just slightly so that it won't have as much um, what's the word I'm looking for roughness uh, yeah so it'll be less um, sandy and a little bit more paint but um, but there's still a lot of grit in there anyway. And uh, yeah. And you see, I can paint right up to the building, over the building, uh, over the foundation, because I'm gonna be peeling that um, ASAP, really. Um, and then right up to the walkways. Uh, you hear in my door creak? Yeah. I had to close the door. Uh, sometimes I will, sometimes I will uh, record at night. Uh, sometimes I will record in the daytime. Uh, sometimes uh, everybody will be asleep or sometimes my neighbors will be mowing the lawn you know it just depends on when I decide to record and if it's a nice day like it is today sometimes I'll have my door open uh, in this case I have the door open my neighbor is working in his yard but he, he has this whistle and this is just, it's creepy. It's a creepy, uh, scary, you know, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like serial killer style whistle that he does. If you hear it, you know, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I decided to not close the door, but at least get it, um, not close the door, but at least reduce the opening so you can maybe not hear his creepy whistle. And it's the same whistle every time. It's not like he tries a different tune or anything. It's all exactly the same. And it's all creepy. <laughs> I don't think he, I think it's a nerve, I don't real. I don't think he realizes what he's doing. Can you hear it? Okay, well I tried to close the door. Uh, 90% of the way. It's just basically a jar because it's a nice day out and I'm allowing the, the weather. Okay. 
Okay, I'm trying to do this in a hurry because I don't want this part here to dry on top of the tape. Uh, and because I'm using two colors on top of each other, um, I didn't want to mix up brushes per building. If that makes sense. I, oh, I've got an extra brush. I probably could do that. But I didn't, so we'll see what happens. Okay, that looks good. All right, let me get the light on there. Blend the, these two together. Instead of taking time to go wash this brush, I'm going to just jump in to the second color. So that I can peel it. All right, and then a little bit of dark brown went inside there. I'm okay with that. Mainly because this is still wet on this side. Try not to get on the road. There we go. Okay, I could peel this one right now, which I might probably should do. Just texture the part next to the tape. And that way I can just go ahead and pull the tape. And then I can finish texturing after the tape's pulled. Let's pull the tape so so that it doesn't dry in place. Uh, now, luckily, there's two pieces of tape here, right? So I can actually get in the tape and peel it from within. Look at that. other half peeled. Yeah, look at that. Nice. 
nice perfect squares well they're not really squares they're rectangles but you know what I mean Now I considered putting texture uh, underneath and then just letting the building sit on top of the texture, you know, like sitting on top of a table or something. But since I'm making this a bespoke board, I think it's better just to make the uh, individual, uh, just to make it flat against the table. mess it up by trying to grab the end. Now I probably could have put a layer of Mod Podge on there to help protect the styrofoam. And I think once it's all said and done, I'll still be able to get in there and Mod Podge it. Okay, let's finish texturing up to the edge of the road. a little bit of this dirt on the grass so it kind of disguises that Just clean it up. Okay, I think everything is textured the way it needs to be. We're going to let that dry and then we're going to come back and work on maybe the grass. All right, I'll be right back. All right, guys, now we're going to go ahead and flock these. Uh, the gaps between the buildings as everything is 90% dry. It's almost dry. Uh, I think it's, I mean, there's a spot there that might be not dry. Now, and there's a gap in my uh, ground texture right there. It looks like uh, the texture paste paint shrinks a little bit. Um, because I know I went all the way up to the road, but it looks like it drew back a little bit there. There was a hole here as well. Looks like they're starting to form uh, little gaps. Um, now that might be because I watered it down, but it also might be that it just contracts. Uh, I've got two flocks that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the Flowery Meadow Static Grass as well as a Woodland Scenics medium green static grass. Um, now the Woodland Scenics medium green is what I'm going to be used primarily, but I am going to put some uh, flowery meadow in 
a couple of different spaces that I think might represent someone's uh, garden or uh, or um, just somewhere where wild flowers might grow. Okay, so we're putting some Elmer's glue in a plastic cap, filling it with water, giving me about a 50-50 mix uh, of water and glue. And we're going to stir that up a little bit until it's fully mixed. Basically, the glue will be thinned out. And then we'll start um, painting. Now, what I'm going to paint first is the uh, flowers. Uh, and I'm going to do that maybe right along here. Now, I'm doing my best not to go over into this flat land. Uh, but if I do, it's actually okay because I made it slightly larger to begin with. Right? I made it about a millimeter too large. Now it's okay if the flock gets in there. If there's no glue, it's not going to stick. Right? Now I'm trying to imagine where else I might like these flowers. I think I'd like them right here. sure if I want to do this whole section as flowers but I think I would do the side yeah the side of the building uh, maybe where they can't get their lawnmower you know some wild flowers growing down inside there Okay, now this building here is the is an inn, so um, maybe the side over here. I'm trying to decide, like I want this to be grass, and I think I want this to be grass. This could be grass as well. Um, Yeah, I think I'm going to go around this edge here with the flowers. Now, one thing is, if I get the flowers on the path, that's not that big of a deal. I just don't want to get the flowers on the foundation. Close the door a little bit so you don't hear those crazy people outside. Okay. 
probably still can hear them though. And I'm also not going for 100% coverage. It kind of looks like I am, but really I'm not. I don't mind a little bit of dirt shining through. And I've already done this here, this little corner. Uh, I think that's it for the flowers. Um, I think. Nope, I think I'm going to do just a little bit of the flowers right here. Not a whole lot, just, just a little. Remember, it's wildflowers. Okay, and then the rest will be grass. All right, let's put that up to the side. And it's kind of a medium green woodland scenics static grass. Okay. And we're gonna, you notice how I didn't clean up any of the flowers um, because if there's going to be a little bit of brown exposed between the two and that's okay All right. we just sprinkle it on here Again, I'm not going 100%. There's going to be a little bit of brown shining through. That's okay. Let's do this little section right there. Why not, right? Holding off on that because it looks like there might be a, might still be just a little dry there, so I'm trying to I mean wet, so I'm trying to avoid that a little bit. Two millimeter medium green static grass by Woodland Scenics. Okay, this one looks dry and it's got that little hole there, but we're definitely going to cover that up with grass, so let's not worry about that. 
I just want to make sure that I make these uh, paths that go onto the road a little more clean. And that's what I'm doing. I'm putting grass down to clean up imperfections. Um, between the dirt and the path. Now it looks like Okay, that worked out pretty good. Good. That looks good, and it looks like I need to just put just a little bit. Okay. In areas that I'm trying to disguise, I'll basically put heavy grass, but in other areas, I'll just put light, you know, if I'm not trying to disguise something. Okay, looks good. I'm digging it so far. Now you really won't see what this looks like until the gr glue is dried and the all the excess grass is knocked off and the buildings are placed. All right, so let me do these sections right here and then we'll be back for the next part of the video. Actually, I'll do these sections and then I'm going to let it dry and then we'll be back. All right, I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, with all the grass laid, now I just need to let it dry. Uh, give it about 30 minutes or so to let the Elmers dry. And then we'll shake off all of the excess grass. Uh, and then we'll see what it looks like going forward. Now, uh, something I can see that I tried adjusting the uh, white balance. I tried to adjust the saturation, etc on the camera because there's something I can see with the naked eye that you might not be able to see on camera is that this area here is a very off-white almost a yellow uh, it's think like ivory color and then this right here is the area that I textured with the light earth it actually, I don't know, on camera, it almost looks exactly the same. But in reality, this has got a, a more of a yellow-brown look compared to this. So there is actually a, um, a difference. Uh, this looks a lot more like what these dirt paths look like, because that was all light earth as well. Uh, but this looks more like an ivory. Uh, now I'm thinking, uh, this is just something going through my mind, I might go back in and paint uh, inside the lines with a dark color, maybe a mahogany or, a, or a, uh, an oak or something, just really dark brown uh, throughout burnt umber, whatever I've got. Uh, and then I'm going to paint inside there to disguise the transition from the building to the grass. Alright, but first let's let this dry and then I'll be right back. 
All right guys, so the grass has dried. Uh, I brushed off most of the excess. I even brought out the church to put it on the table as well, just so you can kind of see how the whole village kind of lays out. I was able to fix the, uh, the area here that I misroaded, you know, uh, because I had the ro road driving all the way out here and then I had to go in and fix it because the road is supposed to go out here uh, because of the way I cut into the foam. But uh, that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about is working on these. Now, <clears throat> uh, I put the buildings where they belong, but you can see, uh, hopefully you can see along the edges of these buildings uh, is the ivory or the light tan uh, part of the part uh, that's that's not um, it's not covered because remember when I put the when I put the tape down I gave it like a little extra millimeter and that extra millimeter uh, ensured that this spot would be big enough for me to put the house in but it also uh, leaves the tan exposed and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of Mod Podge right uh, and I'm using the the hard coat Mod Podge but I'm going to put a couple of drops of this uh, burnt umber into the uh, the Mod Podge I'm going to mix up a small batch and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the um, the edges here uh, so that when you put your actually I might just cover the whole thing who knows uh, and then when you put your building down you're gonna have this really dark brown along the edge where it will be it'll disguise that um, hindsight is 2020 if I had uh, if I had thought about this ahead of time I would have painted the town with the Mod Podge and the dark brown over the entire thing knowing that that would have been a better foundation than the tan but my thought process at the time was do the tan because it's going to match the uh, the driveway and the walkways which I personally think might be a mistake all right, so um, let me mix up a little batch and then we'll paint these three foundations and then we'll move on. All right, now I've got my makeup brush, which is a, a very soft bristle brush. And that's what I usually clean off models. I dust things. Uh, it looks like everything's dusted. Now, here we go. Now I'm pushing it into the grass. And again, it's okay if it gets on the grass or in the grass because it's brown. And I've decided to do the whole foundation uh, mainly because the Mod Podge will protect the styrofoam underneath. Plus with use, the building being put on and off and it might uh, need a little extra protection. Okay. 
Okay, just basically trying to get most of the bumps and ridges out of it. So it'll be a nice, smooth, flat surface that the building can rest on. Okay. Uh, give me a second while I do the other two, and then uh, I'll be right back. All right, guys, it looks like it has dried. Uh, it is, now if I was to push these two together, there we go, like as if it would be on the table, and then put these buildings where they belong uh, in their little cubbies. This is the cafe, absolutely. Fits right down inside. Yep. And then we take this one and line up the doors and the windows and jazz. And then we put it right in there. And you'll notice it doesn't really want to slide around because it's got grass uh, elevated a little bit around all four sides. So the building is going to kind of stay right where I wanted it. Uh, this one will slide a little bit because of the, there's no grass on this side. So uh, if I push it all the way in against the grass, then the two, two corners, it should be good. And this one as well, this one's not going to want to uh, shift. Okay. So that's how they go. That's how, now, there will be a hedge that comes up to here uh, on this side of the road. Uh, and then, um, and then there's also going to be a bocage line across here. And then everything back here is hedges and hedges and orchard and hedges and bocages and stuff like that over there. But this is pretty open on this side, except for the church piece that goes right there. go ahead and get that out um, one good thing about this church graveyard area there's a line right there it allows me, and there's the road right there it kind of goes perfectly right there uh, nope don't even have to think about it <laughs> and then we put the church on its uh, foundation and there we go we got the town of Kikitni. I think it's going to look good. We got some hedges that are going to go down here. Now, I still need to do a little work on the terrain tiles in that, you know, I need to do some uh, additional clump foliage and bushes on the slopes. But almost all the tops are done. Now, I need to do something very similar to this to the farm complex. I'm going to do that off camera because, you know, it's basically exactly the same thing that you saw here. And then once I get all of those finished, then maybe I'll show you what those are all about. All right. Thanks for coming out and watching this video where we finish the uh, town sector here uh, with our, our village of Kikigny and uh, the the uh, cafe with its parking lot in the out front uh, a little road that leads back to the backside some footpaths you know uh, where i fixed the road as well over here um, i really like the way the static grass came out on the uh the way i did it the static grass actually looks really good i i, I kind of like it as terrain all right, um, I guess I'll see you in the next video.